Ash, Simba, Hydrox, and Boo, the Lucky Ferals. It's a little bit after 1 p.m. right now, and the snow is melting really nicely today. So I uh, was able to dig out the automatic feeder, and I just refilled it. It was completely empty, so I refilled it with dry cat food. I'm gonna put the roof back on it, and then that'll be good at least. Here's Ditto, he's been watching me. He's like, what are you doing? As you can see, this pile of snow is still like twice the size of him. This is a massive pile of snow. How you doing, Ditto? You okay today? So I gave them food. This is the breakfast that I put out for Hydrox and Ditto. There's two plates of this, which is some uh, canned food, which they did not want to eat. So then I put some crunchies on it, and they did not want to eat that either. So I'm just going to move these off the back step. It's 2.35 p.m. I thought that was Hydrox hanging out by the back door on the mat, but it's Ditto. Look, it's Ditto, and there's Hydrox. They're looking at me like, what's going on? They have food outside. There's some water outside. The feeder is full, so I guess they're just enjoying the sunshine. I want to go outside and enjoy some sunshine also. This is Boo's day sofa, and this is where he's been spending a lot of time recently. And this plaid fabric on top of it is plush material, so it's made out of like polyester. And I believe this is a plush, a little plush blanket also. And the other day, I was laying on this uh, day sofa, just relaxing, and Boo um, was laying with me. And I petted him, and I got the worst static shock that I've ever had. Like, it was bad. It was really bad and it, it usually when you get like a static electricity shock it's usually pretty quick but this seemed to last for several seconds and I was like oh my gosh if I felt that I wonder if Boo felt that and I have noticed that out of all the cats he's the only one that I've been getting static electricity off of with the other cats I don't get static electricity and then today I just had another really bad shock off of him and I noticed today he's also been grooming himself a lot. So I'm wondering how much of his over grooming is being caused by static electricity. So I did some research and there is a correlation between static electricity and over grooming. Static electricity can be a cause for over grooming. Then I started to look into ways to reduce static electricity and what can cause it. So dry air causes static electricity and this winter it's been really dry. I do have a small humidifier running in this room, but I don't know how much it's helping. Another thing that causes static electricity is artificial fabrics, like this plush blanket, these polyester blankets on Boo's bed uh, can be contributing to his static electricity. Now, the other cats mostly lay on my bed, and I have a white linen duvet cover on my bed and linen does not hold static charges and it does not contribute to static electricity so what I'm gonna do is find another piece of linen I think I have another duvet cover somewhere uh, I know I have some linen sheets and I'm gonna put that on this day sofa instead and I'm gonna be curious to see if it cuts back on Boo's uh, static electricity issue and uh, also his over grooming. I just put a linen duvet cover over Boo's day sofa. It's like a dusty aqua color or like a grayish blue. Um, I put it right on top of the plush blankets. We'll see if this works and if not I can always take those plush blankets off. I also swapped out uh, the little cat blanket and this one uh, I think is made out of cotton and hopefully it won't make as much static as the plush does. So we'll see if Boo likes it. Boo just jumped onto the day sofa and he's, uh, he's laying on the linen. And then I believe this is cotton, I think. Maybe it's a cotton polyester blend, but I don't know, it feels like cotton. 
hopefully if he lays in the linen it'll kind of absorb some of the static electricity. All right, boop. It's about 11 a.m. right now and I've been out running some errands this morning. I just got back and I opened up Hydrox's shelter so I could clean it out. We're expecting another winter storm tomorrow, so I wanna make sure that he's all set up. And I just wanna show you what's going on in here. So there's been three of the training pads. There's one here, which is really um, on the bottom. Here's the heated pet mat and it has a training pad wrapped around it. And then I put another pad just on top of it and if he's going to do anything in the shelter, he usually does it on the other pad that's just on top. So I take that out and replace it. And it's been several days now since I've opened up this shelter. And there's uh, a training pad here that's really dirty. It's all bunched up, but he has not peed in here at all. There's no signs of any pee or poop. Um, so that is really good. Um, so I'm just gonna clean it out now. Here's Ditto. He's laying in the sun in front of his shelter. He's very happy. And here's Hydrox. He's laying in the sun um, over here by the house. It does look like uh, his eye is a little bit watery, but could be from the cold. Sometimes he gets that from the cold. One other thing that I want to point out is that it looks like the back door to the shelter is now accessible. If you look through the front door, you can see all the way through to the back of the shelter. You can see some snow there, but it's not taller than the door anymore. So we had a lot of snow melts yesterday. So it looks like the back door is accessible again. It's 8.30 a.m. and it started to snow, I don't know, maybe like a half hour ago. We're supposed to get snow all day. The forecast keeps changing. The original forecast was like six to eight inches and then I'm hearing like a foot of snow and the last thing I heard was four to six inches. So I'm hoping we only get a few inches and then we're done. We've already had too much snow. Just when the snow was melting, now we have more. So Ditto is in his shelter. There's Hydrox. Hydrox is hanging out underneath the house. He was in his shelter, but I had to clean it out. So. After talking about how he's been so good with it, he has not been using it as a litter box. I woke up this morning, I looked at the live stream, and yeah, he peed in the shelter. So I just had to take one of the training pads out and put a new one in, and he could go back in his shelter anytime he wants. The other thing that I had to do this morning was to adjust this feeding station. So in this kind of crate thing, uh, this is what the camera is attached to. There's a live stream. Uh, pointing at this feeder and this used to be maybe a foot back here You could probably see it in the snow where it used to be but with the snow um, I wanted to protect the camera from like snow piling up in front of it So I wanted to put it so the cameras under the table which it is now this table used to be in this direction So I just changed the direction of the table um, I made sure the heated kitty cafe is under it and there's also a heated water bowl on the other side. That is the large heated water bowl. Unfortunately, I can't move it any farther under the table because it, the cord is basically stuck under like an iceberg of snow. So for now, it's fine. I actually don't mind it half sticking out because as the snow falls into it, the snow will melt and it will actually keep that bowl supplied with water. So here's the camera. Uh, it has a really nice view of everything. I actually like the view better this way than it was yesterday. I just opened a large can of cat food, like an 11 ounce can, and I filled up these two bowls for the heated kitty cafe. I just have to add some water to them because the heated kitty cafe is heated. Um, it can dry this food out and if I add some water to it, it'll stay um, moister longer. So I'm gonna do that and then I'll put this back in the kitty cafe and then we're good to go for now. I'm here with Simba, and look what I have. I have a pom-pom on a stick. I use these skewers to clean out the vacuum, and I saw a pom-pom on the ground. 
And I said, I wonder what would happen if I put a pom-pom on a stick. I wonder if Simba would like it. And he loves it. This reminds me of um, a mallet. Like if you've ever played uh, the marimba or the xylophone or the vibraphone, this is exactly like what you play them with, like a mallet. And they do have um, some felt mallets, so you can play softer, and they have harder rubber mallets, so you could play louder. Right, Simba? This is also kind of like when you go to the doctor's office and they hit your knee to check your reflexes. Almost. Almost. Right, Simba? He says, that's his. It's his. It's his pom-pom. It's like a cake pop also. It's kind of like a cake pop on a really long stick. Do they sell cake pops for cats? Just not obviously made out of cake. I wonder if I could make a cake pop for the cats. I made cupcakes for the cats that time. Maybe I could make some cake pops for them. He took it. The other end of this is sharp, so I just want to be careful with it. You want it? You want the pom pom on the stick? Whoop, that's what you did with it. Be careful, don't poke yourself. Don't poke yourself with the palm, palm stick. We could pet Simba with the pom pom. Pet him with the pom pom. Pet him with the pom pom. I'm shaking your pom-pom, Simba. Shake your pom-pom. Shake your pom-pom. Okay, you had enough of it? Here's Boo. Would Boo like a pom-pom on a stick? Boo, you want a pom-pom on a stick? Oh, Boo likes it too. I have to get some kind of stick that's not so sharp on the other end. I just stuck myself with it. Stella, you want the pom-pom? Pom-pom. Want the pom-pom, Stella?
It is 12.45 p.m. And so far we've gotten another three to four inches of snow, but thankfully it's really light snow so far. So I just cleared a path to Ditto Shelter and a path to the side of the house. And I cleared off the patio and I cleared off uh, the feeding station. And because of the wires, all these cameras are on wires. Um, I have to be really careful with the snowblower. Um, so if the snowblower comes back here, it potentially can cut the wires. So it's better to do it by hand. Here's the shelter Hydrax stays in and this has all been shoveled out. And Hydrax was inside, but the shovel scared him. So then he, he fled. And there is also this rubber made shelter under the house. So um, there are other cats around. They could use this if they want to. Thank you for watching this Lucky Ferals video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you'd like me to post more videos, and please make sure to check out these other videos that were selected especially for you.